Hello, so we're doing asymmetric angled launch notes um, today. And so you just did symmetric angled launch, and that's when you have things that start and end at the exact same height. When you have something that starts and ends at a different height, we call that asymmetric. And these are going to involve angles, which means more trig. Okay? So you have two different types of things that we're looking at. Okay? And so we're going to do launch from above. Okay? And this is maybe when you have like a cliff. Okay? And something is launched off the cliff at an angle and it goes up and falls down and hits something. Okay? So you would have a V initial and you would take your angle with respect to the horizontal axis and that would be your theta initial. The height of the cliff from here to here, that's technically your delta Y, that's your vertical displacement, and that's going to be a negative number because you are higher at the beginning than you are at the end. So your vertical displacement is from here to here. So that is a negative number. Where you end up, okay, from where you start, that's your range. Okay, which we have identified as your delta x, your horizontal displacement. And then when you land, you're going to land with your impact velocity at some angle of impact as well. Okay? Now, these go up before they go down, so they will reach a maximum height. So this part right here, how high this is off the ground, this is your max height. Okay. So we make a chart for these guys. So I'm going to do this chart again like we always do. So V naught, V, A, X, T. And we'll have an X portion and a Y portion. And then let's have maybe a max height portion as well. Okay? So the x is moving at a constant velocity. So that means your acceleration is zero, so your initial velocity and your final velocity are exactly the same thing. Since it's launched at some angle theta, okay, your v naught in the x is v naught cosine theta, and your v final in the x is also v naught cosine theta. And the y, it's being launched at an angle, so this is v naught sine theta. But your final, it's going below the plane that it started, so it's going to be going faster when it hits this point than when it left in terms of your vertical, so those are not going to be the same number. It will, in fact, be negative. You just don't know what it is, so you may have to calculate it, especially if I ask for impact velocity. Your acceleration is due to gravity, so that's negative 9.81. Your x displacement is the range. Your y displacement, this is your vertical displacement. It is not the max height. Time is t, and that's the same in the x and the y. Okay, so for at the max height, we're going from here to here, right? So then your v initial is going to be v naught sine theta at the top of any trajectory at this point right here at the top your v in the y is equal to zero meters per second so then your v final at that point we're going to call that zero it slows down due to gravity so that's negative 9.81 this will be another vertical displacement From, um, from the launch point, so from the top of the cliff or the launch point, whatever you want to call it. This time will be less than the whole time for it to go up and back down. So this will be a different time. And for the most part, I'm not really going to need to know anything about how long it takes to get to that max height, so I'm probably not going to ask you that information.
you're probably not going to need it to find this. But if I want to find the max height, this vertical displacement from the top of the cliff, so it's like I'm saying this to this, okay, is that vertical displacement from the top of the cliff, this. So then in order to get your max height, it's going to be your, your cliff height plus your vertical displacement from the top of the cliff. So you kind of have to add two things together in order to find the max height. Okay, so that's for launch from above. You can pause it if you need to finish writing stuff. Okay, our other option would be if we launch from below. So that would be, think about, here we are, we're on the ground, and here's a wall, okay? And so something is launched up and goes there, and it hits right there, okay? Or we could have something on the ground, there's a wall, and it launches up, and it's still going up at the moment that it hits the wall right there. So you can have something that goes up and down and hits the wall while it's moving kind of in a vertical negative direction. Or you can have something that is still moving up when it hits the wall. So you can have two separate situations for this. So that can be a little taxing. I would probably have to tell you in the problem if it's still moving up. So for our purposes, for most of the time, this is the situation that will prevail. This situation right here is probably more likely what's going to happen in most of your homework problems. Okay? So in this case, we'd have a V initial up. There'd be my theta initial. There's my range. Okay, which is my delta X. My delta Y would be there, and now my delta Y is positive, okay? This is going to be a positive number. <clears throat> and my max height would be there. So it's not right in the middle. We can't do a half Y because it's not right in the middle, okay? So that's about all I can label there. Um, for this one, this would still be my range or delta x. This would still be my delta y, which would be positive. But because it's still moving up, this would also be my max height. So I'd have to tell you if something is still moving up when it hits the wall. Otherwise, you can assume it's going to go up and then down. OK? <clears throat> OK, so if I did a table for this fellow, OK? So v not. P, A, X, T, X, Y, and maybe a max height. But I'm going to do a max height for the star version one. I'm not going to do a max height for this one. Because if I know delta Y, I know max height. You can, you can verify it if you want. But I think it would be easier for you if I just tell you, let's stick to this type of thing for this guy. But this can happen, obviously. Just this is mainly what you're going to see in your homeworks. Okay. So in the x, we have a v naught at an angle. So x, v naught cosine theta for initial and the final in the x direction. a is 0. x is range. We're going to call tt. In the y, the v initial in the y is v naught sine theta. It goes up, and then it's coming back down, which means it's going to have some negative v in the y direction. But because it ends up higher than it was before, this velocity is going to be a little bit less than this velocity. So, But it's going down, so it's still going to be negative, but it's going to be less in terms of magnitude. It's going down because of gravity. 
So y here that is the vertical displacement, it is going to be positive for this one. And it happens in time t, these two t's are the same. For max height for this fellow right here, my v naught is going to be v naught sine theta, but up here, my vy at this point is zero meters per second in the vertical. So this will be zero, negative 9.81, that's why it slows down. And then this will be your max height. You don't have to add anything for the launch from below. So that is your max height. And this will not be the same time as this. This will happen at a different time, less time. So I'm probably, again, not going to ask you for that. We're not going to deal with that. Okay? These will still involve um, some impact velocity things as well. Okay, so that's your notes. So let's do a couple of example problems, and I'll probably go relatively fast for these. So pause as necessary. Okay, so this is your from above example. A paintball is fired from a 5 meter high cliff at 18 meters per second at 35 degrees above the horizontal. Okay, so this is a from above. So I'm going to draw my little picture and label what I can, and I'm probably going to do it kind of crudely, but that's fine. So my V initial is 18 meters per second. My theta is 35 degrees. My cliff is 5 meters high, so my delta Y here is negative 5 meters because it winds up below where it started. Okay, so I need to know the range. So I need to know delta X. I need to know max height. So from there to there, I need to know uh, max height. And I need to know impact velocity. So V imp and theta imp, because I need to know both of those. Okay, so next I'm gonna do the, um, the chart. Okay, and I know a lot of you probably don't like to do the chart. I, I don't care, you should still do it. V not V A X T. It doesn't take that long and you're more likely to get things right if you organize your information than if you don't. X, Y, X, height. If I don't ask you for max height, don't bother with that, with that third column. If I ask you for max height, do the third column. If I don't ask you for that, don't, don't bother. It's a waste of time. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is make sure that our calculator is in degree mode. So hit mode and make sure it's in degree mode. Otherwise, none of this works right, okay? So make sure that's happening. And you wanna also make sure that you still have the Poly Simulator 2 in the apps because we're definitely gonna be using that today. If you don't have that, you're gonna to have to somehow get that back into your calculator. So either ask me, ask Mr. Swart, one of us can um, probably help you with that, okay? Okay, so first thing I need to do is find my V naught and V final on the X. So that's going to be 18 cosine 35. So I stick that in the calculator that's already in degree mode. And I get 14.74. So this is 14.74 and this is 14.74. Acceleration is zero. I don't know range. I don't know time. And the Y. My V naught and the Y is 18 sine 35. And so that is 10.32. So this is 10.32. Um, my V final, I don't know, because, but I am going to have to find impact velocity, so I am going to have to find that. My A is negative 9.81. My delta Y is negative 5. They told me that, the height of the cliff. I don't know time. For max height, my initial is 10.32. My final at the top of the trajectory is 0, accelerating at 9.81. Um, and I don't know that, and I don't need to know time, so don't bother with that part. Okay, so now my chart is nice and filled out, and I'm ready to go. So, first thing I need to find, probably, is going to be, let's see, I need range. Well, in order to find range, I'm going to need time. So I can use the Y information here to find the total time. Okay, so using the Y information, okay, we're going to do... Delta Y equals V naught T plus A T squared over 2. Okay. Um, so 
I want to get this, I don't know time, and I have time in two different places here, this is going to end up having to be a quad thing because my V initial is not zero in the Y, and my A is also not zero in the Y. So in order to find time, I'm going to have to do a quad. Okay, so I'm going to plug in the numbers first and then rearrange them. So delta Y, right? So, so that's um, negative 5 equals v naught, which is 10.32t, and then a t squared over 2. So a is negative 9.81. Negative 9.81 divided by 2 is negative 4.905t squared. So I want to rearrange this in that a, b, c format. So I'm going to move the negative 5 over, and I'm going to switch these two in terms of their place. Okay? So then 0 equals negative 4.905 t squared plus 10.32 t plus 5. Okay, so then I'm going to quad that and get my t value. Okay, whoops, put that where you can see it. Okay, so we're going to do apps, poly simulator 2, enter, enter, enter. I want it in order of 2. I want it in decimals, not fractions, and then we go to next. So hit graph, and let's see, so I have negative 4.905, I need 10.32, and my C is positive 5, and then solve. Oh yay, okay, so I have a positive time and a negative time. We can't go back in time, so it must be the positive. So the time is 2.51. So it's 2.51 seconds for the whole trip. Okay, now to get out of this, remember, um, you press second mode twice, and it takes you back to where you were, okay? Okay, so now I need to find, I need to switch to, I need range, so I need to switch to X. So I switch to X information, and delta X equals V naught T plus A T squared over 2, a in the X is 0, so that part goes bye-bye. So then V naught is 14.74, and I would not round anything. I would use the numbers in the calculator. We've already rounded time, so, you know, too bad, so sad. That's what it is. Okay, so then we plug that in our calculator. So I'm going to get up to that and highlight it and hit enter, and then times 2.51. And I get 37.01. meters. And that's my range. Okay, so, oops, so part A is all dunsies. Now we're moving on to part B. Okay, so for part B, we're doing max height. So I would use the max height column. Now, for this one, I need an equation that doesn't utilize time because I don't have time and I don't care to find time. So, I'm going to use the V final squared equation. So, V final squared equals V initial squared plus 2A delta Y. The V final here is 0 for this column. Okay, 0. So, I'm going to rearrange everything and solve for delta Y. So, I'm going to subtract V naught squared from both sides. So, then negative V naught squared equals 2A delta Y. I'm looking for delta y, so I'm going to divide both sides by 2a. Okay, so I plug that in. So negative of v naught, which is 10.32 for this column, so 10.32 squared over 2 times negative 9.81. Okay, so I'll plug that in. Okay. So, negative of that number, 10.32 squared, divided by 2 times negative 9.81 is negative 19.62. Just I would just memorize that, just because it's going to come up over and over and over. And you get 5.43, so that is the max height, 5.43 meters. That is your, oh, that's not your max height, as lying, duh because 
that means that from here to here, so this is obviously not drawn to scale, but from here to here, that is 5.43 meters. And then you have this to account for here to here, and that's 5 meters. So your max height will be 5.43 plus 5. So that's 10.43 meters. And that would be your max height. Okay? Okay, last part would be our impact velocity. So, for impact velocity, we have to find V final and the Y, okay? So we have to go back to our Y information, okay? And now we know time. So I would use acceleration equation. So acceleration equals um, V final minus V initial over time. I would multiply both sides by time. And then I would add V initial to both sides to get V all by itself. So time, which was 2.51, times acceleration in the Y, negative 9.81, okay, plus V initials, that's 10.32. So we plug that in to the calculator somewhere where the light won't reflect into it. Okay, so 2.51 times negative 9.81. It's important to have that negative. Plus 10.32, but I'm not going to round it until the end. And I get negative 14.3-ish. Okay. Um, yeah, negative 14.30. So negative... 14.30 meters per second. That is V final in the Y. I know already from my chart that my V initial V final in the X, so V final in the X is 14.74 meters per second. So now, if I'm thinking about this in terms of that triangle, right, I've got my V in the Y, this is my V in the X, I'm looking for my vent which is the hypotenuse, and my theta, imp. So, vimp is equal to the square root of v in the x squared plus v in the y squared. So you plug that in. So, let's see. Can I put this? There we go. Okay. So that gives you 20.54 meters per second. So that's your impact velocity. Now you have to find the theta imp. So that's inverse tangent of Vy over Vx. Okay, so negative 44.12, and that's degrees. So your impact velocity is 20.54 meters per second at negative 44.12 degrees. So that would be your impact velocity, magnitude, and direction. Okay, all right, one more example, and then I'm done, I swear. Okay, so for this one, this is a from below example. So you have a ball that's thrown from the ground at 6.5 meters per second at 60 degrees above horizontal, and it hits a wall 1.4 meters up. So if I'm drawing my little picture, okay, it's like I'm laying on the floor and bouncing a ball against a wall. That's basically what's happening here, okay? So it's going to go up, and unless I tell you otherwise, it goes up and then comes down and hits the wall, okay? So it's going to look like that. So my V initial is 6.5 meters per second. 
my theta is 60 degrees. I'm looking, let's see, it lands right here. So from here to here, that is positive 1.4 meters. So my vertical displacement is 1.4 meters, and it's positive because I end higher than where I started. My max height would be here, which, as you can see again, is not in the middle. So I need to find max height. Um, I need to find range. So that's delta x. And I need to find impact velocity. So that's going to be vimp and um, theta imp. Okay, so I need to do my chart. Okay, so here we go. So v naught, v a x t x y and max height. For my x information, right, it's going to be 6.5 cosine 60, and I get 3.25, so that's my v initial and final in the x direction, because it's constant velocity in the x, so acceleration is zero, I don't know my range, don't know my time. In the y, 6.5 sine 60. And I get about 5.63 for my initial. I don't know my V final in the Y. I know my A is negative 9.81. I know, I, I know my delta Y is positive 1.4. I don't know my time. For my max height, I know my initial is 5.63. My final in the vertical at the top of any arc is zero. It's accelerating due to gravity. I Let's see, I don't know my max height. That's what I'm looking for. And I don't need, I don't know my time, but I don't need it to solve for this. Okay. All right. So first thing I'm looking for, I'm looking for range. In order to find range, I need time. So I'm going to find time using the vertical component. So for part A, starting with Y, delta Y equals V naught T plus AT squared over 2. My V naught is not zero in the Y, and neither is my A. So I'm going to have 1.4 equals 5.63 T. A is negative 9.81. Negative 9.81 over 2, you may as well memorize it, is negative 4.905 T squared. I'm going to rearrange this in, so that I can quad it. So zero equals negative 4.905 t squared plus 5.63 t minus 1.4. And then I'm going to quad. So I'm going to find my t. So we're going to pull out our apps again. So app, apply simulator, enter, 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 next. So our A is negative 4.905, our B is positive 5.63, and our C is negative 1.4, and we hit solve. Okay, so there's two positive times. That's because if this is the plane right here that crosses the 1.4, right? This is the plane that crosses 1.4. It's going to go up and cross that plane first, and then keep going up and then come back down at the end and hit that plane again. So this is your shorter time when it's still going up. The other one is your longer time when it's going down. So we're going to use the longer of these two times, the 0.78 seconds. You can go with more decimals or not. I'm just going to stop at 0.78. So time is 0 0.78 seconds. Okay. Now I need to switch to my x information because I need to find range. So delta x equals v naught t plus a t squared over 2. a is 0 in this particular part for x. So I'm just going to plug in v naught, which is 3.25, times t, which was 0 0.78. Second quit, second quit. Okay, and so 3.25. 
0.25 times 0.78. All right, so I get about 2.54 meters. That's my range. Okay, done with part A. Moving on to part B. Part B, I'm going to use my max height portion of my chart. So this is my max height part. And so for this one, I'm going to use the V final squared equation because I have V initial, V final, and A. I'm looking for delta Y. So V final squared equals V naught squared plus 2A delta Y. V final is 0. I subtract V initial squared from both sides. So then I get negative V initial squared equals 2A delta Y. So I divide both sides by 2A. And I get delta Y. So negative of my V initial in the max height is 5.63 squared over 2 times A, which is negative 9.81. I get 1.62 meters. That's higher than 1.4, which makes sense because it goes up high and then it hits. So this is your max height. Okay, done with part B. On to part C. So for part C, I need to know my V final in the Y in order to find my impact. So I'm going to use the Y information again. And so, um, let's see, I'm going to use the acceleration equation. A equals V final minus V initial over time. Multiply both sides by time and add V initial to both sides. And that gets V final all by itself. So time, which was 0.78 times negative 9.81 and then plus the initial in the y which is 5.63 so this will give you your v in the y I get negative 2.02 .02 meters per second. So that's my V final in the Y. My V final in the X is the same as my V initial in the X. So my V final in the X is uh, 3.25 meters per second. So now for my VIMP, so VIMP equals the square root of VX squared plus VY squared. Ah, where's the light not going to be? There, okay. All right, so 3.83 meters per second. And now I need to find my theta amp. Theta amp is inverse tangent of Vy over Vx. So negative 31.90 degrees. So your VIMP is 3.83 meters per second at negative 31.90 degrees, and that's your impact velocity. Okay, 
Do your homework. Make good choices.